This is the first video that I'm publishing on a project of gut rehabbing a bedroom in my house. The first part that I'm publishing is on plaster and lath. I hope you enjoy and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. It's time to start ripping down the plaster. And there's some tricks to this that will save you a ton of time out there. Now, a couple of things before you start hammering into this wall that you need to consider. One, PPE. You need to wear goggles, which I'll have on, and a face mask. You don't want to go breathing this stuff in, okay? And a high quality uh, breathing barrier is much preferred than those cheap little 20 for $2, okay? So spend money on that. The main, one of the things you really have to consider before you start knocking this down is what is on the other side. If this is the total gut rehab, who cares? Just plow on through. But on the other side of this wall is a finished bedroom that has already been done. So I've already done the other bedroom here. I'm doing one bedroom at a time because that's what we can afford to do. So um, I have to be very careful when I'm hammering onto this wall because I don't want to damage anything over there. You want to make sure on the other side of the wall that nothing is hanging there, okay? And you want to just take a little extra care. You always have to consider what is on the other side of the wall. Two of the walls in here are outside. They go out to stucco. This wall here goes into a bedroom. Another wall will actually go into a bathroom, so we need to be a little cautious there as well. This is how you take down drywall. I'm gonna talk you through it, and then I'll show you how to do it. The tools that I have found best to taking down drywall are a small flat end shovel like this, or the thing that I like the best is a tile scraper, if you have one. They're not expensive if you don't, they'll save you time. You can use really anything you want with a flat edge. This one I actually got in the Secret Santa. Don't know how to take that, but I got it anyway. And this tile. So what you want to do, either way, some people use a hammer for this. You want to start to bang on the wall. And what that does is the plaster that is attached to the lath, you'll see here in a couple minutes, it holds onto the lath by the plaster being forced through it and looping over. We want to start to disconnect that. You don't want to take the lath down while you're taking the drywall down, that, or the plaster down. That is very important. Cleanup is so much harder when, you're try, when you just try to rip everything down at once. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and get my PPE on, and then I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, here we go. Getting started is always the hardest part, but once you crack through, it becomes much, much easier. And also, the more experience you have with it, just the more comfortable you get with it, the faster it will go. So you're starting to see the lath back here now. And this is where that plaster is attached to. So, we'll continue on. This really doesn't take a very long time, okay? Again, I really like the tile scraper here. It gives you a long reach and it's really sturdy. It really makes doing this very easy. One of the things that I found helpful as I moved on through this project was to break up the plaster into the smallest pieces possible. That way it would take up least, the least amount of room in the bags, making it, you can use less bags to move the same amount. And the bags don't rip as much as it's happening. You can also see the amount of dust created here. It's a real mess. Make sure you wear that PPE. It was less than five minutes to get that whole thing down. My recommendation is always, always, always leave the lath on, to leave the lath on until you're ready to take it all down, okay? Notice I didn't start with the ceiling. We'll talk about that later. I'm gonna fast forward to the cleanup, but I don't want you to underestimate the amount of work this takes to clean plaster up. It is very heavy and it is a lot of work. You can see here that I use a couple bags, which I'll explain here in a minute. But again, anytime you're doing this, make sure you understand what you're getting into before you start. You can see that it does not take very long, about five to six minutes to rip down the whole wall. That's awesome. But it took me about 25 minutes to clean up all the debris. All right? And don't let these videos fool you. This is back-breaking work. It's physical labor. So if you're not in great shape, you need some help, or you need to have a really, a really strong, strong constitution to get through it. This wall is by far the biggest, so it'll be the most to clean up, but these other ones aren't gonna be much easier. So um, we're gonna go through the exact same process on the other four walls, 
Also, another thing that I noticed with these five gallon buckets, the bags that I'm using, I have some contractor bags, but they're not working great just because I'm putting too much in there and they're getting too heavy. One of the things that I've noticed before is that Menards bags, the plastic bags that give you Menards, work really, really well. But they're not a full five gallon. So if you take and you put a little debris at the bottom of this, the bag will actually sit there and it won't flop in when you drop a bunch of uh, plaster into it. It's actually been working out pretty well this time. And the Menards will typically let you take as many of those bags as you want, at least the ones that I go to. And so uh, free advertising for Menards, and they work really well. They're very strong. Do not use the Home Depot bags. They will rip. So I haven't tried the Lowe's ones though. All right, so on to the next wall. To try to break up the hard work that it takes to bag these up, I started to break up the wall in sections and then take breaks as you can see to bag them. This just made the process a lot easier. But it's not gratif it's gratifying because it is so nice to knock down a wall in three or four minutes. But it's a real pain in the back, literally, to sit there and clean it all up. Now you can see here I've moved to another wall and I'm starting to get into the finer detail. And I have to take a little more time here. I've had to move away a little bit from the tile scraper and uh, take another break to bag a couple things up. And then I went to a hammer. I even got out a, uh, a small little pry bar. Now I'm doing the back wall that attaches to the bathroom so I was a little extra careful here and also ripping out the rest of the outside wall following in through with my cleanup. Now I'm going to start to take down some of the trim inside of there so I can reuse it later. Okay so I'm entering the next phase of my project. So all of the wall, the plasters have been torn down, not the ceiling and I'll talk about that in a minute. What I want to do now is rip off the lath on the outside walls because I want to be able to get in there and insulate and then while I'm in there I'll update the electrical. Now the other walls, like this one right here, this one connects to another room so I'm not going to insulate it. I may regret that later but I'm not going to go ahead and insulate it for now and I'll drywall over that directly to it which is great. Now there are some tricks when you go to do this. The first thing is you want to save some of the lath, okay? This is a big deal because we're gonna reapply that lath to the wall so the drywall has something to attach to that it'll come out as far as the plaster was before, which saves a ton of work with the trim later on. You'll also notice here that the ceiling is still attached. Okay, I have not ripped off the plaster there yet. Now, some people will actually leave the plaster up there and then put drywall up there. I have two by fours up here and I'm a little afraid that that's gonna to be too much weight. So what I'm going to do, I'm waiting to tear this down because it's such a mess. There's really kind of nasty installation, this rock wool style installation, insulation up there that's really kind of gross and I don't want to get in everywhere while I'm still doing all this other stuff. So that, I will wait to the very last possible minute to rip that down. So I'm going to rip all of this down and then the next phase will be to rip that out, okay? And so... While I'm doing this portion here, I'm going to start to try to edge up the trim work, okay? I was originally trying to keep all of the trim on, but I realized pretty quickly that that wasn't the best approach. So I'm going to try to just knock off a little bit of the edging around the trim and uh, see how that works. I'm also knocking off uh, part of the very top layer of the baseboard down here. It comes in two pieces, and I, it's, I, you've probably seen in a little bit of the videos before, but I'm taking that off so the drywall can just slip underneath that, and then I can place that back in there, no big deal. I'm also gonna work around the electrical outlets and everything. So I have two walls that I'm gonna do uh, that go out to the outside wall to rip all this down. I'm gonna start off slow, and then I'm gonna kinda kick it into high gear once I get comfortable with it. You always want to be careful when you're doing this because now there's going to be nails. So you need some hard hold, you need some uh, really good steel toed boots to do this because um, there will be nails around. And again, cleanup is always the issue. Always be thinking about cleanup because cleaning this up is by far the hardest physical stuff. So I'm going to rip this off and then I'm going to start to uh, get everything organized. So, all right, here we go. You'll see here that I use a number of different tools. I use a little crowbar to get started and then the tile scraper to take off chunks at a time. Most of the time I would just go to one edge where you can see it's nailed in and rip that out. And then I was starting to find that it was a lot easier to just rip them out by hand when there was only one more nail hanging in there. 
The reason I found it to be so much easier was because then I could just take it and throw it right into the bag. You can put a lot of these in the bag if you have them all going in the same direction, which I thought I found to be a really helpful. Here I'm taking off the top of the baseboard to make sure that drywall can just drop right in there. This really will make a lot the work a lot easier later on. Okay, so the, so the walls are completely prepped. We have the lath tacked on here to uh, pull the room out for the drywall, the studs out for the drywall, so it'll match up to where it was. So now it's time to rip down the ceiling, and this will be the last plaster that we do that. And again, I saved that because the insulation up there can be a little nasty. So as uh, it comes down, it'll be even a little bit more dirty, or at least it could be a little more dirty than it was when we ripped the, uh, the plaster off here. Now we'll also leave the lath up there because if we take the lath off, then all of the insulation is going to come down and we don't have the money to insulate it yet. And so, so again, a tile scraper here is awesome. All right, here we go. I got really lucky and a neighbor came over to help me for the day. Having him there didn't cut the time down in half. It cut it down by much more than that. Getting the plaster off the ceiling really couldn't have gone much smoother. So I felt really lucky. And... As we continued on, it was now time to clean up the rest of the plaster that was on the floor. And again, having a second hand there was awesome. I hope you've enjoyed the video and there's a lot more to come. Please subscribe.